In our last episode, we finally found James in Vault 112. But Vault 112 presented us with a rather tricky ethical dilemma. If you don't want spoilers, you should watch my video on Vault 112 and Tranquility Lane first by clicking here. In Vault 112, we found our father James hooked into some sort of virtual reality pod called a Tranquility Lounger. He was surrounded by a bunch of other people, and when we checked their vital statistics using the nearby monitors, we found that some people were fine and others were highly stressed. Since we couldn't talk with the overseer of this vault, who was also plugged into the simulation, we hopped into an empty Tranquility Lounger and entered the simulation ourselves. Once inside, we discovered that the overseer, taking the form of a little girl named Betty, was calling all of the shots. He had gone through a number of different VR simulations before finally settling on the Tranquility Lane simulation. But since he had been doing this for over 200 years, he had gotten bored. But we learned that he had gotten bored a long time ago. He talked about a previous desert island simulation and a ski resort simulation, and during both simulations, he passed the time by finding unique and creative ways to kill off the other vault dwellers. The thing is though, when he killed them off in the simulation, they didn't die in real life. He was able to just resurrect them in the simulation, give them brand new bodies, and erase their memories. So what we have here is a playground for the overseer, Dr. Stanislaus Braun, populated by real people, but real people who have no memory of what Braun does to them, with one exception. Before we entered the simulation, there was one tranquility lounger that was giving us odd vital statistics. The occupant, Dithers, still appeared alive, but the terminal wasn't able to accurately read her vital stats, and it says that she needed immediate medical attention. In the simulation, we meet Old Lady Dithers and discover that she's the only resident here who knows what's going on. It's not real. None of it. This. All this. It's all fake made up a dream world, only the dream never ends. I want it to end for all our sakes. He keeps us here so he can laugh and feel good about himself. But I know, I know what he's doing and I know he uses the fail safe. He calls himself Betty now, but he's still the same. He can put on a new face all he likes, but underneath he's still evil. Braun, bastard thinks because he helped create this place, he's God here. But I know he still uses the fail-safe terminal. I know it. Her tranquility lounger is somehow malfunctioning, which means that Braun doesn't have complete control over her. She knows that she's in a simulation, and she knows that Stanislaus Braun is in control. She also says that she is uncomfortable. Don't know. Can't sleep sometimes. Hear voices. My own skin doesn't feel right. None of this is right. You've got to believe me. You've got to find that fail-safe. It needs to end. The suffering must end. She begs us to activate the fail-safe. Only by activating the fail-safe can we remove the Overseer's power. The problem is when we finally enter the abandoned house and correctly enter the musical code to find the fail-safe terminal, we discover that if we activate the fail-safe, not only will we strip Braun of all power, but we will permanently, and in real life, kill the Vault Dwellers. Now this is presented to us as a great foil for Braun. One of the reasons he hasn't tripped the fail-safe himself yet is because the fail-safe kills everyone in the vault except the Overseer. And there is no greater hell that he can possibly imagine than to be stuck in Tranquility Lane for the rest of eternity alone. The only thing that brings him any measure of joy in this life is to torture the residents of Vault 112 stuck here in this simulation with him. If we kill them all, he has no one left to torment, and he must stay here for eternity with only himself as company. That is indeed a form of torture for Braun. I can imagine why he wouldn't want it. And it seems like justice. After what Braun has done to these poor residents of Vault 112 for 200 years. But the reason I'm having a problem with this, the reason I think there's an ethical dilemma here, is because Old Lady Dithers is the only resident of Vault 112 who's in pain. Yes, Stanislaus Braun is torturing all of the people here. 
Their lives are his to play with. He can do with them what he wills. But after he kills them in an extreme and creative way, he brings them back to life and erases their memory. They have no memory of what Braun did to them. In fact, they have no knowledge that they're in a simulation at all. Every resident we meet in Tranquility Lane believes that they are living in a real town. Of course it is. It's America, isn't it? Another perfect Saturday afternoon. Make sure you enjoy it, sport. Timmy? Oh, he's a good boy. George and I are so proud of him. Heck of a place to live. Janet and I, well, we're quite happy here. It's very nice. We're doing quite well. Nice place. Real nice. Everyone's friendly and always happy to lend a hand. Well, there's certainly never a dull moment. I think it's like any other street, really. Always something to see and always something to talk about. I like it well enough, I suppose. Mabel is good company most of the time. And, well, the other neighbors are mostly very nice. This simulation, this tranquility lane, is their real world. And, with the exception of Old Lady Dithers, they all love it here. No matter who we talk to, Bill Foster, Martha Simpson, Janet and Roger Rockwell, Mabel Henderson, the news bombs, they think this life is great. They love their families, they love their homes. They're not miserable, they're not in pain. So I have to ask the question, is it right to put eight people out of their misery who don't even know that they're miserable? Now the situation with old lady Dithers is unique. She knows she's in the simulation. She comes to us personally and asks us to kill her. Doing that doesn't bother me so much. It's similar to the situation with Harold. Harold asks us to kill him. That presents its own ethical dilemma. Both Lady Dithers and Harold are being tortured in their own ways. If it was just old Lady Dithers' life on the line, then I'd say do as she asks, put her out of her misery. But it's not. In order to put her out of her misery, we also have to kill everyone else. These people did not ask us to help them. They have no knowledge that they're in a simulation. They're not in pain. Now, of course, we could come up with an alternative solution that completely removes the ethical dilemma. Wouldn't it be nice if we could find a way to lift the curtain to show the residents of Vault 112 that Bronn's been pulling the strings all this time, that he's been torturing them all this time, to give them the opportunity to decide their own fate, to ask us to have us kill them or to allow them to remain in Tranquility Lane forever. Wouldn't that be nice? But that's not one of the options we have. The only options we have are to allow Braun to continue to play God or to play God ourselves. And that is essentially what we are doing. If we activate the failsafe, we are saying that we know what's best for all of these people, that it's better for them all to die violently than it is for them to remain in this lie. Yes, Dr. Braun is a psychopath. He's sick. He needs justice. Perhaps an eternity in Vault 112 alone would be justice for his crimes. But if so, in order to mete out that justice to Dr. Braun, we still have to kill all of these innocent people. Is it really justice to kill all of these people in order to give Braun the punishment that he deserves? Here's a hypothetical. What if Dr. Braun wasn't part of the equation? What if we just stumble upon this vault, we find all of these people stuck in this simulation, and we have the opportunity to pull the plug or leave it alone, let them continue to live their lives in this simulation? We come back to this God issue. Who are we to choose life or death for all of these innocent people? I mean, yes, we make life and death decisions all the time in the wasteland, but usually it's when a raider is firing at us. We have to kill them to survive. In this hypothetical situation, none of these people are harming us in any way, and yet we still have power over their lives. Yes, they are living a lie, living an eternity in this virtual world, but who are we to decide that they're not allowed to have that life? That death is superior to that life. That death is a gift to them that we know best. The major difference between this hypothetical that I posited and the real situation we get in the game is that Dr. Braun is continuing to torment these people day after day after day. 
killing Mabel, then ruining the marriage between the Rockwells, and who knows what other atrocities he's committed against these poor people. And unless we do something, he'll continue to torment them forever. If they were aware of this torment, then I think the decision would be much easier for me. But none of these people, with the exception of old Lady Dithers, are aware of this torment. This is on display during the simulation. If we kill Mabel in a way that Betty doesn't approve, he just resurrects her. She appears back in the game without any knowledge that we recently murdered her. The same is true with Martha Simpson. If we take the rolling pin and we bash her brains in after we ruin the Rockwell's marriage, we find her walking the streets again, alive and whole, with no memory of recently being battered to death with a rolling pin. If none of these people even remember the torture, how can we call it torture? If that pain is not implanted upon them after each and every murder, stacking upon each other and compounding over hundreds of years, then I don't know if I would call that torture. It's cruel, it's barbaric, it's sadistic, yes, but these people aren't being scarred by it. The one good solution we have, the one that rewards positive karma, is to flip the failsafe, which deposits a bunch of Chinese commandos in Tranquility Lane, who then go about hunting down all of the townspeople, terrorizing them before shooting them. That's the good option. That's how we kill them, and that's how we strip Brawn of power. Is it more noble to terrorize these people, to make their final moments on this earth ones of fear and horror before killing them permanently, than to allow Bronn to continue with his torment, but a torment that no one ever remembers? What finally allowed me to come to a decision here was old Lady Dithers. She's the only one who knows what's going on. She's the only one in constant pain and torment. So, in my mind, killing her as she requested, putting her out of her misery, and as a consequence, stripping Braun of power and punishing him, is a more moral solution. It's not a good solution, don't misunderstand me, I'm not advocating for this kind of behavior, I just think it's the best of two very bad options. There is no wonderful great option in this scenario. That's why this is an ethical dilemma. Both options, in my opinion, are bad. The reason this choice is bad is, as we've discussed, in order to choose it, we have to kill all the people in the vault. Is removing the torment from one life worth the deaths of eight others? Here's how I see it. The lives of those eight people ended when they were plugged into their tranquility loungers. Since then, they haven't been able to make any new memories. Their lives have been destroyed, overwritten, rewritten and redestroyed over and over and over again for 200 years. This is why in my video on whether or not the railroad is moral, I said that they were good but misguided. They're misguided because they destroy the memories of synths. They're more concerned with the body of the synth, the chassis of the synth, than with the mind of the synth. And if you wipe a person's mind, what's left? Without memories, who exactly are they? Really? The Vault 112 dwellers are not who they think they are. They're not who they were in the past. Timmy, for example, is an adult. We see him lying in his Tranquility Lounger. He's 200 years old. He has the body of an adult. But in Tranquility Lane, he's a small child. Was he a small child during the Ski Lodge simulation? Could he have been an adult married to one of the other inhabitants during the Desert Island simulation? I get the impression that the people we meet in Vault 112 are all characters written by Braun. He has created these characters and forced all of these people to play out these roles he's created for them. Yes, these are real people, so they react in ways that are surprising to Braun, which is why he still wants them around. But the people they were before they entered the vault, those people no longer exist. They died as soon as Braun took power. Perhaps I'm rationalizing here. I'm happy to admit that. But I think the best decision is to activate the failsafe, to put old Lady Dithers out of her misery, and to kill the rest of Vault 112's residents, fully aware that we're playing God, which itself really bothers me, but doing so realizing that the people we're killing in Vault 112 were inventions of Stanislaus Braun. The real residents ceased to have any control over their lives or their minds or their memories 200 years ago. 
By activating the failsafe, we're putting one old woman out of her misery and destroying the invented characters that amused a sadistic madman for 200 years, giving him his just desserts. I do walk away doubting the morality of this decision. I hate the idea of playing God, but the Lone Wanderer finds him or herself in this position. We didn't look for it. We didn't ask to be God. We find ourselves with the ability and a moral obligation to make a decision. This is the best explanation I can give for the actions I chose to take in the game. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Which do you think was the most moral decision? How did you rationalize it in your game? Share with me your thoughts in the comments section below. I publish new Fallout videos each and every week on my channel, and right now I'm working on the next episode in the full story of Fallout 3. So if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you feel like you're still missing YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find them on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.